Hey everybody, welcome to another GMAT explanation. Let's go ahead and get started by defining the question. So for this one, there's not a heck of a lot to define. I would just go ahead and say that we're looking for the sum of three numbers. And you can just give each of those numbers a variable. For the setup, I'd make a list. We're talking about the sum of squares, so let's go ahead and start listing out the squares. Take your time with this work. You don't have to go as fast as I'm going. Maybe you can go faster. Whatever your pace, uh, find that, that pace that makes sense for you. I'm going to stop at 64 because we're talking about uh, the sum of three integers that are going to add to 75, so it doesn't make sense to go up to 81. I'm going to start with 64. That's the biggest number. And let's figure out what balance we need to get to 75. So we're missing 11. And so from these numbers, we need to pick two of them and create 11. And so, of course, everything bigger than 11 isn't going to work. And so the question is, can we create 11 from 1, 4, and 9? We definitely can't. So 64 is out. And we're going to do the same thing with 49. 49 plus what equals 75? And that's 26. And again, we want to find uh, the sum of two of these numbers that equals 26. So you just scan the list and 25 and 1. So our numbers are 49, 25, and 1. And you need to take the roots of those. So uh, 7, 5, and 1 is 13. And we're looking at E. Takeaways. Basic organizing. In this case, we made a list of squares because that's what the question was about, squares. So it makes sense to just splash out a bunch of uh, relevant squares so that you have them in front of you. Um, but that principle can be brought to other questions as well, where you might make a list, where you might um, just write out some options. If the question is about numbers divisible by 3, maybe you're writing out 3, 6, 9, 12, dot, 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 dot. Focus on constraints to make your follow-through easier. In this case, we knew that the sum of the three numbers had to be 75, so that ruled out a bunch of things, and it also helped guide our starting point. Because we were looking for se for 75, it was easier to start with the bigger numbers that would sort of fill up more of that 75. And then we just had to figure out sort of what, um, what the leftover pieces had to be. In general, I would say stay practical, stay grounded, and focus on organizing things. And from that organization, you're going to make the inferences that will help you narrow down the answer choices. Okay, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. Hope you found that helpful. Subscribe to stay updated with new GMAT explanation videos. Good luck on your GMAT, and we'll see you next time.